Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another percussion discussion, where this week we're going to be learning how to make a practice marimba at home. Down in the description, I've included a list of different lengths for cardboard depending on the length of marimba you want to build. So first of all, get that cardboard and measure it out to the appropriate length for you. I'd like to welcome back my special guest from the last video, Mineral the Cat. The cat is not a requirement, so please include at your own risk. You'll need a permanent marker in order to make marks now and later, and you'll need a good pair of scissors in order to get through the cardboard. Next up, we're going to measure the short end of the instrument. So in order to do that, we need to find the center 11 inches on that side. So using a pencil, use this equation with minus 11 divided by 2 to find the length from each end you need to measure. The other side needs to be about 30 inches, but this side is not as important. So just measure to the end of the cardboard if you're close to 30 inches. If you'd like to be exactly 30 inches, feel free to do the extra cutting. Now it's important to recognize that the near edge of the instrument represents where the chord is, not where the end of the bar is. This will be important because when you're practicing, you should give yourself that little extra space from the instrument as if the bar is still there. Next up, we'll need to measure 15 inches from the wide end near side, or the bottom left corner, and then measure an extra 4 inches from there. These marks are going to represent where the middle marimba chords are. Now the far side will need to measure 5 inches from the short end far side, or the top right corner, and then an extra 2 inches from there in order to get the far side chord marks. Connect these marks top to top, bottom to bottom. You might need a partner to help you do this to keep the tape measure steady. And this will show you where the marimba chords are. So this is the spot on the instrument where you absolutely do not want to play. For this next part, you're going to need a ruler or a square in order to measure out the length of each bar refer to the bar width chart that I supply below in the description in order to get the sizes that you need and be sure to add a quarter inch after each bar. Now it'll be important to write in the note names as you go so you can keep track of where you are and be sure that you don't accidentally measure some bars too wide or too narrow. Trust me, I'm kind of a zone in type of person so I did this many times myself while trying to record this video. It might help to add the octave, so this instrument I'm creating is a four octave, so it starts with a C3, then you might include a C4 and a C5 just to keep track of where you are. After that, grab the square from your partner, give them the pencil, and then give the square back to your partner. Now we're ready to measure one half inch up from the 15 inch mark from earlier and another half an inch up from the adjacent mark on the short side. This is going to be the near edge of the black keys. It's a very important part because we often play there when playing the marimba. Now draw these quarter inch marks for the black key spacing, almost perfectly splitting each white key. You can opt in for a handheld eraser here just because we'll be doing a lot of erasing if you're like me and you want to get this as pristine looking as possible before we go over it in Sharpie. Next up we'll be erasing the non-existent black keys that are found between the notes B and C and E and F. It's very important to do this so that you don't accidentally create some sort of alien marimba that no one's ever seen before. Alright, once finished up with that, then we can start going over our marks in Sharpie. Now it's really great to have a square here, or maybe just something with a right angle on it that you can get some Sharpie on, so that the look of the bar is very clean. While this is happening, it's important to realize that the top of these bars does not represent the edge of the bar, but where the top chord is. The bottom edge of the black keys, however, does represent the edge of the bar, and you'll see a faint line going through the black keys, which represents the marimba chord. And there we have it, people. Your very own stay-at-home practice marimba. Now, it's important to know that this won't give you any pitches. I hope you realized that when we got into this. This odd little art project rather gives us the opportunity to experience the spacing that we would find on a standard instrument at home. All right, that wraps up this episode. Thank you for tuning in. Fold up your practice instrument and stay safe.